just a quick warning, if you have not played Red Dead Redemption 2, there are spoilers ahead. I recommend playing it before watching and or listening to this podcast episode. Hello everybody, I am the OG Gamer, and welcome back to the Gamer's Den, and today we're going to be talking about Red Dead Redemption 2, but more specifically, we're going to be talking about Micah, and how long was he really a rat? So, the game tells you that he was a rat after Gorma, we know this because Agent Milton tells this to Arthur, presuming that he's going to kill Arthur, and therefore any way for that information to leak back to the gang. Uh, however, that does not go uh, quite according to Milton's plan. Either way, the fact of the matter is, is I believe I have evidence to suggest and, and possibly even uh, some logistical thinking here that would make sense and pieces of the puzzle that I feel like would fall into place with this theory. So, to, to start off with, we're going to start out with the Bla with Blackwater. So, we know for a fact that at one point or another, both Dutch Vanderland's gang and the O'Driscoll gang were operating in Blackwater. Now, at some point, O'Driscoll's gang went up into the mountains, right? Now, we don't know how long they were there before, excuse me, before, uh, Dutch Randallin and his gang happened upon them. However, what we do know is that about, we'll say about six months or so prior to the events of the Vanderlyn gang going up into the mountains, Micah Bell joined the Vanderlyn gang. And the interesting thing is how Micah joined the Vanderlyn gang. See, at the time, Dutch was trying to sell some stolen gold. But, the deal goes south, and Micah happens to be in the area and saves Dutch's life, the Dutch earning Dutch's trust, which is why Dutch took him into the game. Now, my theory is that Micah might have originally been an O'Driscoll. I think originally, Como O'Driscoll wanted Micah to infiltrate the Vanderlyn gang. He knew that it was that it had become blatantly obvious that taking out the Vanderlyn gang head-on was not an option. It just wasn't going to work. But what about from the inside? Alright, so, Micah decides after, that Micah decides to set up this whole elaborate thing in order to gain Dutch's trust. He tips off the buyer, he Gets him just the right spot so that once the buyer goes to pull a gun on Dutch, he can shoot him dead before anything happens. <laughs> Thereby earning Dutch's trust. By the way, I apologize if I seem a little stopped up. Uh, allergies. Anyways. Now, I think he originally began reporting to O'Driscoll. And I think that's what we actually caught him coming back from when we find them up in the mountains after the gang moves up to the mountains and we're first actually introduced in game to Micah Bell. I believe that he was coming back from speaking to Colm and that he knew that the O'Driscolls were there at the Adler Ranch and also knew about the ones that were down at the uh, mining camp. I don't actually recall the name of the mining camp. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, the Red Dead Redemption 2 map uh, readily available. I can make that happen, though. Uh, but in, anyways, as I was saying, I believe that he was reporting to Colm. Now, I think that something went south between Colm and uh, Micah. And the reason I say this is because it becomes blatantly obvious that Micah no longer cares that much about helping O'Driscoll. And I'll show you later on how that becomes blatant, but let's focus on where things go from the mountains. So, from up in the mountains, 
Right. The Vandalin gang raid as a ranch and kill the Odrithals that had taken it over. Unfortunately, they were not fast enough to save Jacob Adler, but they were able to save his wife, Sadie Adler. Well, widow at that point, I suppose. Either way, they take her into the gang, and at this point, uh, after basically killing all but one O'Driscoll, apparently there was one O'Driscoll still left in the uh, horse stable out back. When Arthur goes to go in that stable, he gets tackled, they fight, Arthur gets the upper hand, and interrogates the O'Driscoll. Unfortunately, doesn't get a whole lot out of him. But, they do happen to run into... No. No, they do get some information. My bad. Um, they get the informa enough information to know where the mining town is. And that O'Driscoll was there. Now, at this point, Dutch decides to stake it out. And, as they do, this is where they see Kieran... A man who they later on kidnap and take with them speak to O'Driscoll. Unfortunately for Kieran, that was just not his day because the Vandal gang raid the mining camp after O'Driscoll after Colm O'Driscoll leaves. And I find it a blueprint for a score and some dynamite. A score, by the way, is a job or whatever you want to call it. Basically uh, a robbery. But they found a blueprint for a robbery of a train that was coming through just a little ways south. Owned by Mr. Leviticus Cornwall. Now, I feel like... I feel like Micah's hand in all of this is really what's guiding the entire gang throughout the story. Because they do rob this... Uh, train, although not without a few hiccups, like the dynamite not working, which is kind of odd, which I, I'm not so sure that Micah didn't tamper with it just to try to, what's what I'm looking for, sabotage it, but I could be wrong. Either way, after robbing this train, the gang heads south to Horseshoe Overlook. Just south of a little cattle town or a livestock town known as Valentine. Now, this is where things get a little interesting. The, while they were moving into Valentine, Dutch sends Micah and Lenny out to, to Strawberry to look for any kind of uh, jobs or anything of the nature. And while there, uh, Micah gets into it with some O'Driscolls. A shootout occurs and Micah gets thrown into jail. Lenny, however, managed to escape and head ba heads back to Horseshoe Overlook to tell Dutch. Dutch then sends Arthur to go break Micah out, in which afterwards Micah basically shoots up over half the town just so he can get his pistol. Which I found kind of interesting because I kind of want to know some history on that, but unfortunately there's really not much to... Uh, to go on there. Either way, uh, either way, after that, he gets in this, he sets up a camp in Strawberry because he doesn't want to go back to Dutch empty handed. Interestingly enough, if you go back to his camp after helping him, because you help him get the score. You, told, you help him steal the score off of, off the O'Driscolls that then that he then uses as a peace offering uh, for Dutch. But after this mission, if you go back to where his little camp was in Strawberry, you find wanted po a wanted poster there for Dutch Vanderlyn. And I think at this point, I, I think Micah had come up with a plan. See, I think he hated the fact that he was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because now he betrayed O'Driscoll at this point, so he couldn't go back to O'Driscoll, but he didn't want to be part of the Vanderlyn gang either. Frankly, he hated how soft they were in his eyes. So, 
his grand plan was to betray both of them. To start by turning in Dutch Vandalin and his gang, which then frees him up from having to follow them everywhere, and grants him the ability to then hunt down Calm. But things didn't quite go the way he hoped. Unfortunately, uh, Leviticus Cornwall didn't take too kindly to being robbed several times by the gang. And a shootout occurs in Valentine, known as the Valentine's Massacre. At least that's what I've always called it, was the Valentine's Massacre. Either way, Dutch and the gang have to leave and they go to Rhodes. Interestingly enough, Micah suggests a camp spot out by Dewberry Creek, which, as it turns out, was not a very good spot, which was actually commented on by uh, Arthur Morgan and Charles. So, so, I find it interesting that he would choose a spot that was quite clearly a bad spot. And I think it's at this point that he was considering uh, the Pinkertons. I think his plan was to use the Pinkertons, because they had resources and, and all this, in order to take out both gangs. And, in the process, secure his own freedom. Because he knew good and well that he was an outlaw. That even if he did take out, even if he was able to somehow manage to take out the O'Driscoll gang and the Dutch Vanderlyn gang by himself, he still has to deal with the Pinkertons. But if he sells both gangs out to the Pinkertons, then in his eyes, they should let him live. Um, so, I think this was his first act of trying to get Dutch turned in. But it doesn't work because, well, Charles and Arthur blatantly see it's a bad spot and instead pick another spot uh, called Clemens Point. I believe it's Clemens Point. Uh, either Clemens Point or Clemens Cove. I think it was Clemens Point. Either way, while there at Clemens Point, at, at some, at later on in the game, you have a meeting with Tom O'Driscoll. Basically, the gist of it is that the Vanderlyn gang is currently in the middle of this feud between two families in the area that they're trying to get to destroy each other so they can steal their gold. But the problem is they also got the Pinkertons on their tail and they got O'Driscoll. So Micah, or, uh, Micah suggests that perhaps a parlay. Now I will say this much. Micah was not the one that originally come up with the idea, it was actually Mr. Pearson, the camp cook, who had ran into some O'Driscolls while he was out getting supplies, and had been talking to them, and they were talking about peace, perhaps a parlay, if you will. Except, I think Micah either hijacked it, or maybe set that up. I think Micah tried to play ba back into O'Driscoll's favor by offering up Vanderlyn on a plate. Basically, tell basically the idea was to make the gangs kill each other, send in the Pinkertons after them, and that's the end of it, you know. But again, things didn't go quite that way. You see, Calm kidnaps Arthur. No one good and well Arthur's going to be up there because Micah knew he was going to be up there. I think Micah sold them out yet again. But this time to the O'Driscolls. The O'Driscolls were going to sell out the Vanderlyn gang to the Pinkertons. To get the Pinkertons off of their tail. However, Arthur escapes. Gets back to Dutch. Tells Dutch what was going to happen. Of course, Dutch was like, yeah, that, that seems about right. And for a while, things were kind of quiet with Micah. Until uh, San Denis. Now... Well, I say this. I say things are quiet. I think he might have also been what tipped off the Greys and the Braithways. Because I keep thinking back, you know, when I was playing it. There was really nothing there that could have tipped off the Greys and the Braithways. The Greys and Braithways barely really talked to each other. They were enemies. For one. But for a whole other thing, oh sure, it's a small town people talk. 
but no one really knew who these people were, just that they were there. How could they have known their intentions, unless somebody told them? And that's exactly what I think happened. I think Micah went out and told uh, Mr. Gray and, and Catherine Braithwaite both what was going on, and that that was what caused the entire collapse of their idea there. So, you know, then they run to, down to uh, Shady Bell, which is an old plantation house that was once the uh, it was once the home for, of the Lemoyne Raiders, a a rival gang that was still that was soldiers that still believed that the war was raging on. Um, they were taken out, however, by Arthur and Lenny earlier on in the campaign, uh, mainly for guns and, and money. Ironically, that's still things that gangs take each other out over, but either way, um, while staying here is when they, it's while they're at Shady Bell that they come up with the idea for the, uh, San Denis Bank Heist. But they also had another job for, I believe it was a trolley station. Now that one, we obviously know that that was a trap set by Angelo Bronte, a man that the gang meets, uh, right after, uh, the Braithwaite's kidnap Jack, that's John Marston's son, by the way, if you don't know, after they kidnap Jack, and send him to Angelo Bronte and San Denis to keep the gang from getting him, uh, from getting him. So, that one was an obvious trap, but the bank job, on the other hand, clearly, the Pinkertons knew about that beforehand. They had to have. I mean, they were basically waiting for them. And not only that, but it was a almost foolproof plan. The idea was that they would set up a distraction. That would get all the city cops in one spot, right? Meanwhile, the other half of the gang would rob the bank, would, would rob the bank and get out. There was no flaw in that, really. I mean, unless someone tipped off the police. Which is exactly what I think happened. I think Micah tipped them off yet again. I think the idea was to get the gang captured. You know, and then while they're being interrogated, he would admit, yes. Either he would admit to the fact that he was the one that leaked the information, which would probably save his behind, or the Pinkertons would straight up just execute him, but I, I, I think he was hoping to be granted, uh, I guess immunity, if you will, for lack of better terms, but either way, after this happens, they wind up getting on a boat that wind, that heads to Gorma, well, didn't originally head to Gorma, I don't know where it was headed, but I know the storm sank it, and the gang members that were aboard it washed up on the island of Gorma, which was home to a sugar plant ran by, uh, basically ran by enslaved natives of the, of the island. Um, now, it was after they got back from this island that Micah, we know for a fact, was a rat to the Pinkertons. And it actually becomes a bit more evident, too, like when you get back to Le to the rest of the gang who had set up in Lequay, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, but, uh, Lequay, maybe? It was in the swamps, either way. Immediately the Pinkertons arrived. They knew you were there. I think either either Micah tipped them off, or maybe it's very possible that Bill Williamson might have tipped them off uh, inadvertently by asking around. But either way, this prompts them to move to Beaver Hollow. And... I think from this point out, it is blatantly obvious what Mike is doing. Because from this point forward, Arthur really isn't such his right-hand man anymore. Micah is. Micah becomes his new enforcer, if you will. And starts making these plans with Dutch and not telling Arthur about them. You know, 
plans that were ultimately meant for Dutch to fail. And you see Dutch just going insane because he refuses to believe that Micah, this man who shows infinite loyalty to him, could ever be the rat. So he has no idea who the rat is. And admittedly, he thinks it's John Marston at first. Mainly because of how convenient it looked for him. Which I will admit, it did. It did. You know, he gets arrested, right? But Abigail just happens to get away. Like, what are the odds of, of, of that? And, and the fact that John Marston was alive after that, too. And separated from the gang. I think it definitely looked suspicious to Dutch. Which was why I think his plan was to just leave John in, the pr in prison to be hanged. Because he figures, well, the problem will deal with itself if he is the, the uh, rat. And of course, the arts are freedom. And the interesting thing is, is that what Dutch had in mind would have worked if it wasn't for Micah. The idea of making enough noise to get Uncle Sam's attention, if you will, using the Indians. And starting a war between the Indians and the government. You know, would have been an absolutely brilliant cover for them to slip out under. But, again, Michael that whole time was feeding information to the Pinkertons. And it all comes to a head, finally, after Arthur learns of this from Agent Milton just before he gets killed by Abigail. He tries to tell Dutch this. Of course, Dutch was in denial. And, ultimately, Arthur winds up dying as he tells Dutch with his dying breath, that Mike is the rat. But, yeah. Um, now you're probably wondering, how does this all play into Micah betraying the O'Driscolls? Well, I'll tell you how. So, back in uh, San Denis, I think it was in San Denis, I don't remember if it was before or after, no, it was, before, it was after the bank robbery. But, uh, apparently, um, Colonel O'Driscoll got arrested and was due to hang. Now, typically this wouldn't be a big deal for Colonel because he's gotten out of that before. However, Dutch, Arthur, and Sadie Adler go there to make sure that he hangs. Basically by destroy by taking out his only escape method. Um, and I got to thinking, one, how did Sadie come on come up uh, come up with this information? Of course, she might have been listening really hard for any information regarding Colmo Driscoll. But the other thing to consider is, how did Colm get arrested? I mean, we know he's an outlaw. We know that, obviously, he robs places. But the fact is, the Pinkertons were focused mainly on Colm, uh, on uh, Dutch Vanderman, not Colmo Driscoll. See, I think Micah used Colm as a peace offering. I think that the Pinkertons didn't quite trust Micah yet. And so they're like, you know, well, well, give me a reason. Give me proof as to why I should trust you. Micah gives him the location of Colm O'Driscoll. But, and ultimately betrays Colm like that. And takes out a huge problem for him. Because see, now he's got the money from, from turning Colm in. Now all he has to do is finish off the job with the... Uh, the Vanderman gang. So you see, I think where Micah messed up was he got greedy. See, he knew how much money was on that on that riverboat way back in Blackwater. He wanted that Blackwater money. And Dutch refused to go after it. And it, it, it isn't until after what, I think seven years after the events of Red Dead Redemption 2 Whenever John Marston goes out for revenge against Micah, for Arthur, that it implied that the money that Dutch left on that mountain, on Mount Hagen, was the Blackwater money. Used, I personally think, to entice Micah to come out so he could kill Micah. Because I think Dutch, after several years of solitude, began to put the pieces together and realize, wait a minute. It was never Arthur, it was never John, it was Micah. And I don't know about you, but if someone who I thought was, you know, a very close friend of mine 
you know, if someone I thought was a very close friend of mine betrayed me and I found out, oh, yeah, I'd be very angry. You know, I might would do something rather rash. And an outlaw, of course, has no problem killing. So. But anyways, that's kind of my whole take on, on Micah and on, and on the Red Dead Redemption 2 story. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like down below. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. That will let you know when I upload a new video. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.